Hello, today we're going to talk about the stock of a pre-sheaf or of a sheaf and we'll define it and we'll see an example for certain functions uh, for a sheaf of certain functions. Okay, so let's start with the definition. So let's take a pre-sheaf on a topological space X and then we define the stock of F at the point x to be fx, which is just the co-limit over the open sets that, um, that contain x, and then over the set f of u. So again, Mostly we'll talk about pre-sheaf um, of abelian groups or maybe later, we haven't introduced it yet, but later it could be a pre-sheaf of or sheaf of OX modules or something like that. But um, let's stick with abelian groups for now. So um, we have that definition. So if you don't know what the co-limit is, let me give you a more explicit way to express it. So elements in f of x are tuples f comma u where we have um, f in the sections of capital F, so of F of U, and X of course should be in U, and we have an equivalence relation, so um, so maybe let's say under an equivalence relation, namely fu is equivalent to gv, where of course x has to be in u and v, and they are equivalent if and only if there exists. Um, did I write you should be open. So u and v are open, so and only if there exists a subset of the intersection of u and v. Again, w should be open, it should be a neighborhood of the point x, and such that f restricted to w is equal to g restricted to w. Okay, now that's the more explicit definition and now let's give an example so or rather two examples but we'll treat basically one because the other one is um, quite similar so let's take the sheaf of holomorphic fun functions on um, so well sorry uh, Erase that so let F be the sheaf defined by so F of U are just the holomorphic fr functions from U to C and similarly. Um, we define a sheaf G, where G of U are the meromorphic functions to the complex plane. Okay, um, of course, um, the restriction maps are the usual restrictions of functions. And again, you can easily check that this is a sheaf. So, 
we now look at the stock of f at zero so which is just as fx for x equals zero and now let's see what do we get so as usual x has to be in u and in v and u and v are open and f and g are now holomorphic functions okay um, we get that they are equivalent so let's look at the definition if we have a w again w open x and w such that f restricted to w is equal to g restricted to w um, and now i claim that this is equivalent to the statement that the Taylor series of f agrees with the Taylor series of g in a small enough neighborhood. Let's see why this is true. Um, of neighborhood of zero. Okay, um, let's look at this. So, if they are equal on some, some neighborhood, then we can take a possibly smaller neighborhood so that we get a Taylor series representation of f and g. And then, um, of course, if the functions have to be the same, then by the identity theorem, the Taylor series have to be equal. And well, if the Taylor series are equal in a small enough neighborhood, then we can go back and get that the functions are um, equal on a small enough uh, neighborhood. Okay, um, so what we get here is that the elements of f naught, so the stock at zero, they are in one-to-one -one correspondence. So let me write down with what, namely with converging power series. So just some sum with complex coefficients infinite series and converging at uh, around the origin. So, so of course, um, so we don't want to have anything x minus something to the i, but just x minus zero to the i. Okay. Um, so now we've seen the stock for f and now let's think shortly what do we get if we get if we have meromorphic functions well then we just get loro series and also uh, we get similar statements if we consider not zero. So if we take other points in the complex plane, or if we just consider points um, on some Riemann surface. So just if we have another point, then basically all that happens is that we shift that x to, well, maybe I should call this x naught, and then this x gets shifted to x minus x naught to the i, if we are not at the origin anymore. Okay. Um, that's it what I wanted to say in this video. So 
I'm not sure yet what we'll uh, see in the next video. So either we'll talk a little bit more about stalks and exactness of um, sequences of sheaths, or we might look at um, the stalk at points um, of so the stock of the structure sheath at prime ideals for an affine scheme. But we'll we'll see. Okay, um that's it for for that and so have a good time and bye.